What's up my ninjas, I'm Strident, and uh, as promised we are back with a change of pace. I am so sorry for all that drama that was going down with the last video. I mean, did you see that shit? I couldn't believe it, and he continued, he even got racial. So, um, yeah, homeboy's banned. Hopefully you won't have to see any of that crap again. My uh, goal was kind of to put that up and show you how insane things were getting over something that, you know, it was free, essentially. So, um, anyway, back to what we really care about, what we're here for, and that is action figures. And a lot of you come here for my G.I. Joe uh, reviews and commentary, so here we go, just as promised. Um, I've got... This picture is awesome, and I don't even remember where. I think it came off of Dial Warriors, but someone posted it up on... Uh, photographs a long time ago but they didn't know who did it we were trying to figure it out so if you know who it is give them props this shit is awesome anyway with my collection as far as uh cobra stuff goes i don't have a whole lot of like actual cobra stuff i repurposed a lot of things that i thought fit the bill so without further ado here we go So first we're going to jump directly into it. This is the Cobra Zephyr. It was based on a stolen design from uh, Weaponsmith. Destro stole it from him and uh, made this for his girl. Essentially this is going to be the, uh, the, 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 the central point of a story that I'm working on. A little short, you know, that I'm working on. Where Weaponsmith goes after her with the Obsidian which if you go back to my other video you'll see that one but this thing is pretty dope i happened to kind of run across a whole bunch of tron stuff that was on sale at big lots years ago i want to say this was like shortly after the film came out i got this for like three to five bucks maybe eight i can't remember but it was i know it was cheap so i just kept going back you know on my lunch break i would just be over there snatching stuff up um and it was like a good, this was back when, uh, yeah, this was years ago. This was back when Pursuit of Cobra was still around. And uh, my son and I, my older son and I, were actually running around the city trying to hunt down Pursuit of Cobra stuff. But I love repurposing vehicles from other things because you get build quality that's a little bit better than Hasbro's build quality. You know what I'm saying? Like parts actually work, they fit, they secure. Um, things don't fall off and you get lights and sounds that actually sound like something instead of just getting a husk of a vehicle and you're paying like 30 or 40 or even 50 dollars for it you know what i'm saying next up we've got the wheel blaster bike <laughs> i just call this firefly cycle you know what i mean it's spy cycle or it's covert ops attack cycle you know what i mean it's just it's an attack cycle um i could never get the wheel to shoot off so I just use it as a three-wheeled bike. Very self-explanatory, right? Um, I think it works better that way. You know me, I hate gimmicks. Uh, so it, it just does what it does. Essentially, um, I saw this design first in the concept stage years, of, like a year or two beforehand when Retaliation was rumored to be coming out. And when it finally came out, I saw this toy and it was a must get because I was like, yeah, this fits with 
the, the Pursuit of Cobra Firefly perfectly. It just looks, it's got the same kind of angles and lines and it just felt like it would go with him. So that's what I use it for. Um, I'm going to have Tomax and Zaymot uh, modeling all the vehicles for us today. Next up we've got the uh, Dreadnought Doom Cycle. I love this thing. Storm Rider is actually one of my favorite figures because he looks like a grease monkey. Unlike, you know, Monkey Wrench who just looks like a hillbilly. But uh, this bike, just pure Mad Max. That's, what all, that's all I can think of. And the way that, you know, the missile, I mean, wow, missiles. The guns and the blades just flip out like that. It's really nice. And the fact that he's uh, got a mounted, uh, well, it's not necessarily mounted, but he's got a nail gun that is uh, running off of the motor for or engine for this cycle. I think that's just badass. Um, and, you know, the dreadnoughts are always a little bit crazy, so it fits perfectly. So, you know, this one is a favorite of mine that I don't really, I didn't repurpose or change the purpose. I use it exactly for what it is. Next up. We have the Cobra Shock Pod. That's what I like to call it. Because the Shock Troopers use this thing in their urban warfare, you know, um, or battles within the urban landscape. I know it's the Bat Pod, but I never felt like this fit Batman. A bike with guns all over it? It's just, no. So, um, yeah, this is what the Shock Troopers will be riding around on. And it just looks better. I know I, I have Tomax on this thing. I think that's Tomax. Um, and, but when you see a shock trooper on it, it looks even better. Uh, it just looks, it's got the menace and it's got the power. And you know that Cobra's not above gatting folks down. You know what I mean? So I love this vehicle as a supplement to your Cobra forces. Um, next up we have, wow. Looks like we caught him in the middle of trying to uh, make himself look kind of smexy or something. I don't enjoy seeing your booty like that, dude. Um, but here is uh, Tomax and Zayma. It looks like he's pointing out his brother trying to show off his ass in the middle of this review of all my Cobra vehicles. Cut that shit out, man. It's not funny. They're like, look, <laughs> it is a mighty nice ass, isn't it, brother? Yes, it is, brother. I must say, brother. Ha, 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 brother. And they laugh together, all their really fruity stuff. Anyway, um, this is the White Shadow. That's what I call this uh, vehicle. It is a repurposed Tron vehicle, but it works in the sense that it's covered up. It would probably be bulletproof or laser proof. This is from like the old days of Cobra. So um, Storm Shadow used to use this back when he was under, you know, mind control. Um, I sometimes like to divide the eras with different things. Like you know, sleeved uh, ninja costume uh, Storm Shadow was back in the day, and if he uses it now, it's kind of to show you know it's the old way and whatnot. But you know. The new school stuff is more like this. It's a Hayabusa. And that's for my modern uh, Storm Shadow. I just figure the modern Storm Shadow doesn't work for Cobra, so he doesn't need a vehicle that's all super ridiculously high tech. He just needs a fast bike. And he seems like someone who would like to ride a fast, you know, fancy bike. I myself prefer, you know, fat boys because I can't do the whole crotch rockets. They, I'm up too high and I'm too tall, so a lot of times I'm bigger than the bike and that kind of sucks. But um, fat boys, I sit low and, and, and they're usually big and it looks cool. But anyway, you can see that says Hayabusa right there. Um, it just looks right. I got this for like two bucks at Walmart and I was like, white Hayabusa, that's perfect. I did learn how to ride on a Hayabusa though, so there you go. Next we have one of my first vehicular customs, it's the uh, Cobra Stinger, I think that's what I call this, the, the Recon Stinger. Um, we know it's a uh, uh, one of those uh, uh, Doom Buggies, 
But, um, you know, in this case, it's repurposed. You know, obviously you'd use it in a sand landscape, um, a desert landscape, I mean. I don't know why I said sand landscape. But anyway, um, you could also use it in a city, you know, go through, you know, smaller openings and, you know, alleyways and whatnot. It just, it just seems to be versatile. Um, I'm still in the process of customizing this. I painted the body when I got this, which was like three years ago when we first moved into this house. So yeah, I've been slacking, but I've had a lot on my plate as of late. So give me a break. Um, I just like the details. Once again, Chap May holding it down. Love it, love it, love it. Next up, we have Destro's Battle Cruiser, the Pimp Daddy Mobile. Um, this was an Iron Man uh, 2 vehicle. I just dug the look of it. This, I think this one was actually for War Machine, that's why it's black and silver. But I figured this looks like the kind of stinger that uh, Destro would have for himself in the Baroness, you know, so he could ride in style. Because I refused to have him in like a stretch limousine or something. And plus, at the time, I couldn't find the armored, uh, the APC from Rise of Cobra, which I think that thing is nice. But uh, you can see the Mars logo on it, Cobra logo on it. I didn't do much. All I did was remove the gun that sits on the top towards the back because it just didn't look, I didn't feel like it's necessary. Plus, you know, if it's Destro, he probably would have weapons hidden in the vehicle, you know, pop-up weapons or like a super pursuit mode or something like that. But anyway, the point of the matter is that it looks like something Destro would make for himself so he could travel in style but then also be protected. Um, like I said, whenever I'm, you know, collecting, I usually collect with some kind of purpose. And uh, I look at how the designs would work in the universe that, you know, I've created with my Joes. So, you know, this one just seemed like a logical step. You know what I'm saying? Very logical, very simple, and straight to the point. It fits two. I probably should have shown you the inside, but no, it fits two people perfectly with lots of room quality. Next up, we have the Cobra Hiss Scout. My wife got me this for Christmas a couple years back. I think the same year that I got the P40 uh, Warhawk. I like this thing. I hardly ever use it. It's too big. I mean, it connects to the back of your Cobra Hiss, uh, the newer, you know, Pursuit of Cobra, Cobra Hisses, but it's cool. I usually use it on its own. You know what I'm saying? I like the black Hiss driver. It's pretty cool. And next we have the Snake Tracks ATV. Um, I don't use this thing that much because I don't like the weird turning front thing. I mean, it's cool when you're doing photography because then it looks more real but when you're actually playing with it it kind of turns when it wants to um, and I think this is exactly how it was when we were kids too I didn't like this thing when I was a kid that much either but uh, it's a nice little vehicle it's one of those ones that you know when you have the specific like jungle missions or something like that you, we break this thing out and uh, you know we tend to have some fun with it I have another one from the core Next, we have the Ice Cutter, the Cobra Ice Cutter. I like this thing, and I picked it up because the, the way the treads move, it reminds me of the Thunder Tank, the old school Thunder Tank, because the new school one didn't do the, the grabbing the terrain action. But uh, I like this thing. Once again, like I said, I don't have a, a lot of Arctic themed stuff. Actually, between my son and I together, we don't even have that much. I think we have like the Ice Dagger, this, and something else one or two other things um and then we have even less for the joes because we only have we made iceberg and we have a uh, snow job but uh it's a really cool looking vehicle i especially love the fact that it's got one big ass wheel in the back and it's got those cool like clawing treads i mean that's the the number one appeal i mean essentially it's a closed up uh modified hiss uh his scout i'm sorry but I like it. I like the way it looks. It just looks outlandish enough to be a Cobra vehicle. Next we have the Big Daddy Hiss with the big old cannon in the front. The thing is ginormous. I was like, man, I didn't know they made them this big. I'm sure you can already tell just by looking at it. It's not really that big. <laughs> but it, 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 it's a cool little uh, scout vehicle. 
um, I tried and failed really badly with the the uh, you know trick photography of trying to make <laughs> the thing look huge. But uh, yeah, it's a cool little scout. We we'll have this drone. I mean, I don't have a whole bunch of them. This came with uh, Ultimate Firefly from Retaliation. Um, I don't have a bunch of them because I refuse, really. I don't need any more Fireflies, but I might get one or two more and just have this as, like, a drone that would be in Cobra HQ, you know, doing its thing. I, uh... I don't know. It's not that much else to say. It's essentially just a miniaturized Cobra Hiss from the first... Uh, wave of pursuit of Cobra vehicles. I mean, it looks nice. <laughs> it's not much else to say about it. Uh, Tomax and Zayma think so. Um, next up, we have the real hisses. I have two of each. I never went overboard with them because I just didn't feel it necessary. I like the idea of army building certain vehicles, but with these, the cool thing is since I do a lot of digital photography, I could just multiply what I have. You know what I'm saying? Copy, paste, copy, paste. Um, it take a little bit more time because you want to get a clean cut when you do that, but there's no need. But you'll see when I start posting those uh, shorts. Um, I like the retaliation one because the treads don't actually move. It's, it's got wheels built into the bottom, which I think is smarter because the Pursuit of Cobra one, it looks nice, the red one. And it also is released in a desert camo color and in black, like a Night Ops. But, uh, they have real treads, but the treads don't, they don't spin. The, the wheel that turns the tread doesn't spin very easily. So like, it'll go and then it will get caught and then it'll go and get caught. So my son and I found ourselves removing the tread. And you still have decent looking wheels, so it still looks futuristic enough and it doesn't look, you know, jacked up. What I would really like to do is get more of the wheels from the retaliation ones and replace the ones on the Pursuit of Cobra ones. But for now, I think they just look awesome the way they are. It makes them look a little bit more futuristic and less, uh, I don't know, it just it gives it a little bit uh, faster look because those treads don't make it look like it's necessarily fast, you know? And then the fact that it's not kind of sucks. Now, in the back, what I like is that you can have a co-pilot. This door actually drops down and you have a co-pilot in the back of your hiss which is pretty cool because you have a lot of guns on this thing. Um, the uh, retaliation one doesn't have this feature, but the uh, only the Pursuit of Cobra versions have it. And I dig it a lot, man. It's one of those things where it's a nice little piece that updates, you know, completely updates the vehicle. Um, and then, you know, for your Joes, they can sneak behind, uh, um, like, Joes typically do things in a way that's very unconventional when you compare how regular military deals with certain things. Now I know there are ways for a soldier on foot to deal with a tank, but thinking about the fact that you have a co-pilot in the back, you could have a Joe. Joes take tanks on foot all the time, so this just adds to a way that they can take them out. Run behind it, open up the door, kill the pilot, throw a bomb in the back or something, and then run away, and then boom, there you go, you've disabled it. Next up, we have my custom Cobra Ringneck APC. I've actually been looking at a real Cobra Ringneck. It came out around the time of, uh, it was in the Valor vs. Venom series. And I always dug the way it looked because it just was bulky and squat. But anyway, I found two of these at uh, Big Lots. These are Chapmay um, uh, aquatic uh, you know, APCs. And, uh, or amphibious, I'm sorry, APCs. I don't know why I said aquatic, but you get what I'm saying. And uh, I dig them. I apologize for the dust. <laughs> I was in such a hurry. I didn't even like dust off some of these fig these vehicles. But uh, it's nice. I mean, it's got a lot of space to put people. You can't actually put guys in it. I mean, I opened up a spot on, on the very top of it. You can see it over here on the uh, right. I guess it's their, our right, their left. Um, you can uh, you can put guys in there. You just can't really decide where they're going to be or where they're going to end up while you're rolling this thing around. But there's all these slots. You see how there's a one and a two where uh, Zaymot is right now? In the back, there's four more. So you can put a bunch of guys in this vehicle and have them transport, you know, whatever. 
wherever. And it just looks functional because it is functional. This is a real, real world vehicle. Um, I typically would use this one with the shocks because they're all black and it's mostly night operations and urban, you know, uh, landscape operations. So it looks, it just looks like it fits. You know what I mean? Because the way I use my Cobras is they have divisions. I mean, it's the way it should be. There's divisions for different types of, you know, uh, warfare. So there you go. There's my Stinger Mark II. The Stinger Mark II is really the Joe, <laughs> the retaliation ninja vamp or ninja commando vamp or some shit like that. I was like, man, fuck that. I have a good vamp. I have two good vamps for my uh, Joes. And I have two of these for Cobra. I typically use one of them for the Cobra uh, Vipers. And I use the other one for the Mercs that you will see in the hardcore slash, uh, well, Fenner's Company shorts. Um, I like this thing to a point. I need to glue down the top though because it always pops off. But you know, it does the job. Next up, we have the, uh, what was this called? The Deviant, Cobra Deviant. It's essentially, it's a amp suit from uh, Avatar. And I always thought Cobra would have something like this. So we just repurposed it, you know? And it, 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 it already broke once, one of the legs broke. It's not very, the, the build quality is not very good, but you know, if you're just taking pictures, it's pretty awesome. But the thing's pretty damn uh, nice. It's a decent size, uh, lots of good detailing. I wish that when the movie was out, I managed to get more of them than just this one. We only saw this one and I never really saw more of them. And I kind of wish, you know, I did. Next up, we have the Cobra Claw and the, uh, it's like a copter pack. I don't remember what it was called. We always called it the copter pack or like the gyro pack or some crap like that. Cause I remember those from back in the day, they were motorized when we were kids. Um, the motorized or the, the gyro copter backpack came with the retaliation ultimate Cobra commander whom I got for five bucks at uh, five below. And uh, the claw came with an arrow viper. I just figured I would use a regular viper for the time being. Um, these are just like old faithfuls. I kind of wish I had more of them. So I could, you know, have like at least three or four guys always with these backpacks, you know, on them, these glider packs on them. But uh, yeah, they're nice, they're versatile. That's the cool thing about them, you know what I mean? You just throw them on a guy and now you got a different kind of viper. And I like that because it gives you variety. You're gonna see right after this portion, I have another team that uh, has a similar gimmick, but they're 100% dedicated to just, you know, air support. And the gyrocopter backpack is, is, is hilarious to me because it seems like something that, it seems low tech for Cobra, realistically, you know? There's a helicopter on my backpack when I could strap a rocket to my back you know what I'm saying like or a rocket glider with wings and everything like yeah you know I guess depending on the situation it would be more or less you know fitting next up we have my sky serpent strike team these guys are repurposed uh, Tron legacy uh, figures I can't remember what the things were called flight pods or something like that um, whenever I think of Cobra I always think of like super high-tech stuff, almost alien-like, you know what I mean? And the look of this just seems so far future and, and some like something we probably would never see in reality, that Mars would come up with that for Cobra, you know what I'm saying? So um, I went in my big box of stickers and uh, tried to find stickers that would uh, kind of unify them but also allow, allow for some uh, individuality amongst the squad members. I only bought three. But you know, when you're when you're taking pictures of this stuff, it doesn't matter because it's only three of them. You can just keep on, you know, reposing and reusing, and that's the best part about them. They have lights and sounds and whatnot on them, mostly in that core piece. Um, the pilots, you can take them out, but they're not posable, so I just leave them in there. There's really no need to take them out unless you want to simulate a crash, and then you can just pull the guy out, throw him, and you know, continue. Um, the wingspan of these things is pretty damn large, and it's one of the reasons why I dig them so much. And they have these, uh, excuse me, 
kind of articulated uh, tail fins that you can put up like you see in the back you can put them kind of down like the one in the far front or you could put them kind of slanted kind of like what's going on with the one on the uh, left well our right their left but I dig them it gives a, a, a variety to your air support with Cobra and speaking of air support the gunship I love this thing the only thing I hate about the gunship is its size in the movie I mean you could fight in there. It was like 10 or 20 guys inside of there, you know? At least let me put, make it big enough that I could put like five or, or, or four guys in there, you know what I'm saying? You can barely fit the two in that, in that back portion that they allow you, you know? It's two seats, and you really got to squeeze them in there, and I think that's just poor engineering. And I know people will say, oh, if it was bigger, they'd have to charge you more. No. No because in a few seconds I'm gonna go to, matter of fact, I'm gonna switch it around so you can see the Chapmay uh, Blackhawk helicopter, which costs 12 bucks, 12 or 14 bucks, and it fits like six guys. You know what I mean? There's no excuse. Essentially, this is just a helicopter with no propeller. But <clears throat> as far as, you know, using it in your Joeverse as is, it's fun, you know? It gives that level of kind of prestige to whoever it is you put in there, you know? We just pretend it's bigger, <laughs> and we make guys, more guys come out. I wish I had another one, because then I could just chop it in half, or, you know, chop it apart in segments, and then attach the pieces to a helicopter body so that I'd have more space. And next is the Cobra's Blackhawk. Um, I don't know, I didn't come up with a fancy name for this thing. It's just a Blackhawk helicopter um, with Cobra, you know, insignias and whatnot on there. And I got two of these. Uh, one of my early subscribers, Nemesis Pia, he um, hit me to these at um, JCPenney, and they were like 12 or 14 bucks a piece, so I got two of them. Um, I have one for the Joes and one for Cobra. Now, look at this thing. You see in there, you can fit four to six guys. That's what the body of the gunship should have looked like, you know? to scale it up just a little bit and hollow out more instead of I don't know what's going on in there that they needed it to be like that but uh there's a different version of this it's like a rescue version and you see where Z06 uh, is that door actually can open and you can put two more people or three more people in there there's actually seats that are molded in that part and I was always like man it looks like they intended for us to use it, which you'll see in the next shot. You can look in there and you can see there's seats molded and it's like, but why doesn't the door move? They rectified that later on with the rescue version that has more doors and obviously more storage. I might someday pick that thing up. I always see it at Toys R Us. Um, it's worth it. It comes in a pack with several other things. I think a truck, a car, and like a net or something you know with the helicopter but it's worth it I think it's like 40 bucks or close to 50 but I mean for all that it's 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 perfect you see you've got the plastic uh, windshield it just this was a quality purchase and the price was right you know it doesn't say GI Joe it doesn't say Blackhawk or actually it says Blackhawk but it doesn't say the, the actual company that you know makes them so you paid for what you wanted you wanted a toy helicopter and there you go one that's uh, what is this, 118th scale? That works. Next up is the, uh, I think this is called the Ice Dagger. And um, it's one of the few, like I said, uh, uh, Arctic themed vehicles that I have. Um, this was taken when, uh, last, last winter. My son had a project he had to do for school where they had to go outside, interact with all the snow, <clears throat> and take pictures of it. And uh, it was like, build something huge. So we built this huge mountain that we played on and took pictures. Pretty much it was a giant diorama. It was really fun. My fingers were really numb when we were done with it. But this is a pretty cool vehicle. It's actually an old vehicle that's been repurposed a couple times. I think it showed up in Valor vs. Venom, Venom first. And then they kept on redoing it and redoing it and redoing it and redoing it. I only learned about it in Rise of Cobra. So... 
you know, forgive me if I mix up anything, but that was when I first saw it. But when I was going back trying to find the names of all these things, because it's been so long since I looked at that, I saw that uh, it did show up years beforehand. Oh, yeah, yeah. This year, the Black Dragon VTOL. I like these things, but once again, they should be bigger. I, I went through all this in the review, so I'm not going to really harp on it. The design's really cool. We always use these as you know transports and we pretend that you know when you, you shoot them from far away you can kind of get it, it's it's kind of ambiguous how big the thing is depending on the distance and depending on the type of shot so if you pull away from it and you don't have any characters near it it could be bigger it could be smaller it all depends if if you shoot from low angles it could also look bigger you know what i'm saying so Typically, that's what I plan on using it for, and when we play, you know, that's how we do it. We have it in the back, way in the background, like, you know, that's what we all came in. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's pretty decent. It has cool guns and stuff on it, pop up, pop out fig features, wow. But, uh, yeah. Um, and this is the flying, uh, what, what did I call this? The little, it's a little bird, but we called it a flying snake. Um, it's the nickname, I guess, for it. We should call it something else, like the Rogue. The Cobra Rogue. Um, it's a little bird helicopter. It's just simple. I have one for the Joes also. I think this was 10 bucks, and I got this years ago. And this thing has survived many a fall. I mean, I've dropped these things. Well, I shouldn't say I dropped them. They were up hanging, and they've fallen so many times, so many times. But they're easy to put back together because everything makes sense, you know. Even if you have to super glue parts, it's a very uh, durable, uh, you know, simplistic design. It's not rocket science to repair. I love all the detailing on this thing. Um, in Mercenaries 2, this was my helicopter of choice because it's nimble and it's powerful. It's got a lot of uh, ammunition, a lot of weaponry on it. And it's just cool for those those times when you feel like playing and you don't want to really grab the biggest thing you can find, you know? So if you can find two of these, you're straight. So I just, you know, hit it up with some Cobra decals and called it a day because it's kind of what needed to be done. You know what I'm saying? Just that's all you need on this thing for it to be a Cobra vehicle. Um, Nowadays, you see these and the Blackhawk going for ridiculous prices on eBay, and you would think it was like 100% accurate, you know, to the real deal, and that it was motorized or something like that, and they're not. They're very basic toys, very basic, you know, um, but I love them. Like I said, Chap May always holds it down. This is the Cobra Titan. Um, you can tell it's a warthog from uh, Halo. I dig the look of this thing and I dug the capacity and the fact that the seats are huge so I can pose them properly in those seats just made it a win for me. I reviewed this years ago when it first came out. I repurposed it then and nothing's changed since. Even though I have a lot more Halo figures, I still pretty much use this as a Cobra vehicle exclusively. Um, I just dig it because it's it's huge. It's bigger than Vamp. It's bigger than the Stingers. Um, it's just a monster of a vehicle, and that's why we call it the Titan, kind of like that truck. <laughs> um, but uh, the gun is huge, and it, it looks it looks cool. You know, this just looks like urban warfare on steroids. You know, so it it was it was a logical choice. I had it laying around, and I'm like, you know what, this would look cool in my. Uh, you know, in a diorama or in a setup with my my Cobras fighting the Joes, and that's where it went. You know, uh, I think you've seen this one in one of the uh, images I did years ago with uh, Weaponsmith blowing up a uh, one of these. Now this here is the Cobra Locust. It actually comes from uh, the True Heroes line, which is crazy. They have this team called Laser. It stands for something like Land, Air, Sea, Elite, Rangers, or something like that. Um, the figures are kind of, they're bunk, just, you know, don't worry about them. They're fodder. They can sit in the background. They can be, you know, just extra guys to fight. But this vehicle, this thing is huge. I got this for, uh, 
I think it was a birthday or we just, my wife and I saw it and we were like, shit, this thing, we paid 40 bucks for this. Look how big this thing is compared to an actual uh, Cobra, like just a three and three quarter inch figure. I mean, it's amazing that true heroes can like keep putting this kind of stuff out and and for a price that the Joe stuff used to go for and now the Joe stuff is nothing in comparison as far as size and they ask for th twice the price sometimes you know what I mean like this would easily be 80 or 100 bucks if it was a GI Joe vehicle so we jumped on it. it and it was funny my wife was more on this than I was so I'm glad that she pointed it out see I gotta I gotta keep her she's she's fine and she's uh dorky when it comes to the um <laughs> you know to the toys enough that we can geek out about it but this thing is enormous there is a truck that goes with it like a like a van or an apc i think it's called a rock slide and i'm still looking for that thing but uh it can you, it can be held with those legs and it just kind of clicks in but you have enough room inside the cockpit portion for well you have a cockpit and then you have five spaces for five other guys. You can fit more than five guys if you have them all sitting down in the compartments in the very top where you see uh, Tomax hanging out. Um, I think it's a phenomenal vehicle. Um, I will eventually be painting it black or painting portions of it black so that it would look more Cobra and less, you know, army. But uh, there are lights and sounds. That orange button, you press that down and it shoots the Gatling gun on the front. Um, there's so much, like, everything fits perfectly because the figures that go in here are a little bit stockier than Joe's. So you have plenty of room to pose them to make them look like they're grabbing gears or, you know, holding on to joysticks or pressing buttons or whatever. And it, it looks natural, you know what I mean? Because the proportions are correct. And I keep on, I have to reiterate how big this thing is. It's huge. Like, this is easily one of the biggest vehicles that I own. And uh, it's very sturdy. Ratcheted joints on the wings, ratcheted joints on those legs. Um, the top piece, just you just pull it off. It clicks into place once you push it down, and you just pull it off. Because this thing was built to be played with. And it's just out there enough. You know, I, I, I contemplated using it for the Joes because you remember the Dragonhawk uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Dropship from uh, Sigma Six. I I want I want that thing. I actually have pieces of it, and I'm going to show you in a second. Um, I wanted it, but I I was always too late. I haven't found a good one yet. I found a couple on eBay, but I've I found them kind of late. But uh, this was going to be my uh, substitute. But now that I have it, it looks too much like a bug, like something you know monstrous and evil that. Cobra would do so I'm like screw it it's gonna be Cobra but here it is compared to the ring neck and you can see like the ring neck is pretty big for a, you know, a ground vehicle it can hold over eight guys and look at that it's kind of it, man this is this is what I'm saying when I when I tell you guys that you know we shouldn't be paying the prices that we pay for what we get from Hasbro they're bullshitting us but this is why you always should be smart about your collections. And if you cross-play, most of us do to some degree, go out and look for other things to substitute for that awesome vehicle that cost $90 from G.I. Joe. I mean, if you really want to break the bank, or if you're not breaking the bank, then hey, more power to you. But in my case, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to break the bank, so I look elsewhere. You know, sometimes it would be the core. Sometimes it would be... Uh, you know, Chap May. Most times it is Chap May. Um, the legs on this thing are really well articulated. They, there's a, lo a large range of motion. There's that piece in the back, the back fin is kind of, it doubles as a fin and it's a handle. So you can fly the thing around holding it from there. And this thing is not very heavy, so it's not going to break your wrists or give you some kind of fucked up, like, you know, aggravate your carpal tunnel if you happen to have some. <laughs> but, uh, it's it's dope. It's a quality vehicle, man. It's it's one of the, the the jewels. And what what I love about it is it's almost as big as the AC130 that Chap May makes. 
So, you know, they're relatively similar in size. The, the, the AC-130 has a larger wingspan. So, you know, when you're playing, you can have these two things going up against one another, and it looks like it's a fair fight. I love that, you know what I'm saying? Except one is more traditional, and one is more sci-fi, and that's the way it should be. It's funny because a lot of Joe collectors kind of struggle with this, you know what I'm saying? But that's how I feel. Next up, we've got the Cobra Gorgon, or the, I called it the Imp for a little while, but it's not small and stubby enough. The Gorgon makes more sense because it's huge and it's a tank and it's evil looking. This is actually a repurposed core vehicle. Uh, it's the villains for the core. I think they're called the Marauders. I love when something fits so perfectly that you really don't have to do much, and this is an example of that. I needed a tank for Cobra besides the Hiss, just a straight up fast moving, uh, or I'm sorry, standard moving, powerful tank with a lot of artillery. And this fit the bill. You've got the giant cannon on the top, you've got missiles, you've got the uh, freaking 60 cals, I think there's two of them on this thing. You've got pop out missiles, or missile launchers, or rocket launchers, or whatever on the sides. You've got the pop up one in the front, but it's kind of wonky the way that it's set up so the missiles just stay out all the time. Um, you can store a lot of guys in here, I want to say about five or six, which is a decent amount. You know, it's bigger than almost double your fire team. Um, it just, it's everything that you want from a tank. You know what I mean? It doesn't have big ass rubber treads that don't fit properly on the wheels that they're supposed to roll on. Instead, they just built wheels into the bottom and there's a big wheel on the very bottom that's oblong so that it makes the thing look like it's traveling over uh, rough terrain. So it, it's a bumpy kind of ride, which is awesome for a tank. You know what I mean? It just looks the part. Um, this is, a, like I said, an example of, you know, repurposing at its best. The thing is bright because I want people to, I want the Joes to see it and be like, oh shit, it's that thing, you know? And big ass, probably plasma cannon on the top that would just freaking vaporize whatever it hits, especially if it's people. And then you have your, you know, pretty much infantry in the, the running with the tank and in it. I mean, it just, it fits perfectly. Now for the pieces and bits of stuff that, you know, I want to show you that's in the process, you know? Here are the parts of the, uh, what was it called, the dropship, the, the Dragonhawk dropship from uh, Sigma-6. Now, the, like you can see in the back, the back seat, it's a two-seater and the back seat actually can fit a full-size Joe because there's room under the seat, the front seat for the feet of that Joe. But the front, for whatever reason, cannot. You're, I'm going to have to get in there and cut out or dremel out space and you can see Tomac's having a little bit too much fun riding on that Gatling gun it's a good thing it hadn't been shooting for a while otherwise his balls would be stuck to the to his leather pants stuck to the <laughs> Gatling gun because those things get hot anyway um next up there's a uh my wife found this uh plane at uh oh, I'm sorry that's what the next thing will be. But anyway, this is a size comparison, so you can see how long the thing is. It's actually a pretty big vehicle. They're supposed to be um, VTOL uh, propellers, twin VTOL propellers on the sides. They're supposed to be landing legs so that it actually sits kind of like a bird, like a hawk. Um, I'm, I'm gonna get a full finished one, and then there's a box that has a motorcycle in it. Um, this here is the plane that my wife found. I know it's some cheapo dollar store plane, but the shape of it is awesome. And I'm like, this could be, if I could find like two more of these things, I would paint them either black or navy blue, and there would be Rattler Mark IIs. Because they, they just have this nice shape that's just perfect for the kind of futuristic Cobra type shit that you normally see. And all you'd have to do is take the canopies off, get rid of the stickers that say open here, and just spray it down with whatever color it is you want to use, and then put new stickers back on top. And I've got plenty of Cobra stickers that fit for, uh, you know, flying, you know, Cobra's air support. Um, 
like I said before, a lot of times when you repurpose figures and vehicles uh, for your Joes, if, as long as they're close in scale, you have plenty of room to maneuver your Joe inside that space. And I love that. It's an awesome little detail. It works well, and then it gives you room for customization. If you want to add gears, if you want to add uh, decals that have buttons, you know, so that you can have displays and stuff, you have room to work. I have big hands, so this will be a joy for me to work. And the double, the, the awesome thing about it is it's a two-seater. Remember I complained about that with the freaking uh, uh, Sky Striker, and look, here we have a cheapo toy that's a two-seater, and it's a plane, it's a futuristic plane, it's nothing that exists. I mean, that's all I'm asking for. Give us cool-looking shit that doesn't exist. In some cases, you can use things that do exist, but mostly I want imaginative stuff. I don't want all this Black Hawk Down slash Call of Duty bullshit where it's like just regurgitating shit that exists. I don't want to do that because that's not what G.I. Joe is, you know, and I've, I've explained this a billion times, and I know most of my ninjas, you guys get this. Um, lastly, I forgot to mention this while I was doing the others, I have a flight pod, or a trouble bubble, as we <laughs> know them from the 80s, and this is actually an original one from back in the day, and uh, there's not much to say about it. it. It exists, it's still in okay condition. We use it from time to time. It'd be nice to have a couple more. I might look for them on eBay. But there you have it. There are my vehicles. I left out something like the uh, the sky sweepers. I have a bunch of sky sweepers that I might repurpose as fire bats for Cobra. But you know, I'm trying to decide if I should do that or not. But I'm glad you guys, you know decided to sit through this i know it was longer than what i um i was kind of expecting i found a lot of images of my toys that i was like oh shit i actually took pictures of this because i forgot i had it because a lot of the vehicles are packed up so um i also left out my uh, steel crusher apc because it's not complete it's kind of in shitty condition but it exists you know so anyway stick with me i will be back with my gi joe portion of my collection and uh, probably soon after that, I'll do the vehicles too. So that's it for me. You've been great. Peace out, Sai.